scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. And the entrance of your word. Spirit of the living God, we bless you. Are you praying in the spirit? Your edifying your spirit, pray in spirit. Your edifying your spirit. Low, low, low like a mighty spirit of victory.
chapter 20 and verse 32. The presence of God is mighty in this place. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you first to God, second to the world. I commend you first to God, then second to the world. I commend you. I transfer responsibility for the results in your life first to God. Like you transfer a small child and say, from now, take care of him. And God is saying, Paul is speaking and say, I commend you first to God, to, to the word. He says that that word is able. Hmm. Is able. Does not outsource power from any other place. In itself, it is able to build you up. Number one. Number two, it says it is able to give. The word can give things to men. It is able to build you up. Then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. It says, I commend you first to God. Then I commend you to the word. It says that that word is able to build you. To build you means to translate you. To take you to a dimension higher than your prior experience. And then as a reward for staying, it says it will give you an inheritance. Something provable. Something demonstrable. That everyone will know that this one would only have come if a man met God and met his word. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I have come. I have come to encounter God and encounter the word. I trust in the ability of the word to build me. It is able to build you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening. Please be seated. One of the things that I pray will continue to happen to us is that God by His Spirit will continue to grant us the comprehension of the value of the word of God in the life of a believer. It's not enough to just believe that the word of God is God's word. You must believe that the word of God contains within itself an ability and that the word of God is able to make men if received. It says he came to his own and his own received him not. Then it says, but as many as received him. Anything received can be rejected. Is that true? As many as received him, even to them that believed on his name, the Bible says he gave them power to become. Power to become. Nobody is made by default. My brothers and my sisters, listen. Saul does not become Paul just by default. There is a system in the kingdom that makes men. There's nothing wrong with the way you come. Except that if you are willing to engage in the systems of the kingdom, then there is a guarantee that the word of God, God who is the owner of the word, and the word of God commended to you. You know, many times we talk about the word of God, the power of the word, but the truth is that we have not educated people enough to see the value in the word of God. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible says in John chapter 1, the gospel of John chapter 1, the Bible says, in the beginning, listen, was the word. And it says the word was with God. Then it says the word was God. It says that he was with God in the beginning. Now here's the part. It says through him, all things. How many things? 
now when the bible tells you something made everything you should respect it are we together now yes that all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made without him without the word was not anything made that was made without the word was not any destiny that was made without the word was not any life that was made without the word was not any man of god that was made that means when you have the word you have the ability to manipulate anything created by the word are we together now when the bible tells you he wants to give you what created the heavens and the earth it means that he's giving you access is a scepter of dominion that with this word when he grants it unto you then you will be able to tame life and operate at a dimension and at a frequency that will dumbfound principalities and powers now truthfully speaking it may take a while you see because god is not a magician it's a system that means your participation is required but that line upon line my brothers and my sisters let me give you a guarantee and i tell you this in the name of the lord if you listen to the things that i teach you and you open up your heart in all sincerity to receive there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to put down your destiny it's a matter of time forget about the things you do not see and focus on what god is giving you what god is giving you is greater than any car you can buy trust me you must have something greater than material things to get material things you can't have something less than material things and then have these things god is if all god gives you now is a car and a house and money he cheated you he will give you something that will compel the gentiles to come to your light and even their kings to the brightness of your rising are we together now there is nothing in the bible that is a true blessing that is physical listen carefully there is nothing in the bible that is given physical like you give someone something physical you may call it a blessing but all blessings are spiritual all blessings the bible says that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places and in christ we reign in this kingdom by the access to the light that we have unfortunately Please pay attention, especially for those outside. Unfortunately, men are so result conscious that they understand spiritual things too late. The system of the kingdom is such that until the tree is established before fruits come out. So if all you are looking for is just result, you may, be, you may miss a major part of the dealings of God. God is working something in your life and there's still a rent issue waiting. And then the devil will use manipulate because you see, let me tell you this. The domain of the senses is where Satan dwells. He is the master of the sense realm. He knows that the natural man is governed by the impulses, the sensory perceptions that come from his environment. So he will try to manipulate what is there or not there and use it to probe and discredit the integrity of what God is doing in your life. If it is true you are receiving favor, where is it? And you stand and say, boy, it's true. Oh, Kai, God, you serve. I just finished seven days dry fasting and it was by the mercy of God I met my roommate almost finishing his gary. Are we together now? And the devil cheats you because he's a master of the sense realm. But do you not know the Bible says while we look not at the things which are seen, the things which are seen, you don't look at them but you can look at the things that are unseen because the things that are seen are temporal say temporal poverty temporal low levels in the spirit temporal he said but the things that are unseen they are eternal 
so we must be spiritual and by spiritual it means that we use the word of god as our new plane our perception becomes a derivative of the integrity of god's word not our experiences your experience at this level does not capture enough to prove that god is faithful so if you depend on your experiences you will see gaps in supposed gaps in the faithfulness of god you will see obvious things god did not do supposedly so you take your mind your life is too small to just try to create a system of vetting god's integrity you use the word of God and say, Lord, my life may not have A, B, and C yet, but I know from the integrity of your word that you do not fail. And not even my own experience is enough to discredit your integrity. You have cheated Satan when you get to that level. Because Satan will never be able to manipulate you until he uses something that is obvious in your life. Where is the money if you say God is faithful? Where is the anointing? You are a man of God and you claim God has raised you to be a prophet to the nations. In one year, nobody invited you for anything. Is it really true that the hand of God is at work in you? Where are the Gentiles that should come to your light? At first, you will claim you have faith. But the reality of the lack of demand on your grace will sit down and discourage you. And he said, am I called or what? If it's a demonic attack, let me know. And repent and just find somewhere. But I mean, am I called? And God says, just listen to me. But if you continue staying, my brothers and my sisters, one day it will do you like a dream. You will wake up one day into a dimension of the spirit that you will have to step back and join others to say, Lord, what is this? And then men will say, like they always say, he came out of nowhere. And God will say, keep quiet. Nobody comes out of nowhere. He says, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. If, if you give yourself halfway, hoping so that if it fails, at least you can put your leg somewhere. It, it doesn't work like that. Let me tell you. You throw yourself in this thing and say, if I perish, I perish. This, this scientific Christianity, I know God is faithful, but let me patch him with an uncle. So one leg is here, one leg. So that whatever happens, your ego is not strong. And that very ego is why you may never see the power of God. Because you have not proven to God that you have thrown all to him. And you just come and say, God, if you don't help me, I don't have an option. God says, this is what I like. Now that you have stepped aside, let me show you that I am a great God. Are we blessed tonight? I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you. You know, most believers don't know why the church is mandated to meet frequently. Even pastors, most men of God don't know why they hold weekly fellowships. Others think we hold weekly fellowships so that at least there will be resources to run the ministry um, for for the week or the month because every time people gather they drum the fact that you shouldn't come before God empty handed so they think that the regular convergence of believers is just a system of generating revenue for the church it may not be entirely true the regular convergence of believers is a system designed in the intelligence of God it's one of the ways that the church is built one of the ways that the church matures because every time we gather together among the many things that happen number one there is an opportunity for an encounter with the spirit of god that's entirely spiritual are we together now and then number two an opportunity to learn the ways of god to learn the ways of god life will not excuse you for what you do not know life treats those who disobey and those who don't know in the same category i'm passionate about what i do not know i'm passionate about the danger i may submit myself to not knowing what i should know and so my heart is always panting to find out lord thank you for what you have shown me but what else do i not know if you do not know look at me for instance if i'm standing at the edge of this stage and i do not even know that there is a depression here that can throw me down 
I'm just shifting innocently. The depression will not think that just because I'm not aware, it will not touch me. I will fall and it can kill me. Is that true? So when someone tells you, hey, hold on. When you get here, stand. That knowledge has delivered you. Is that true? So we come for a convergence like this because it is an opportunity for God to expose us to the ways of God. And then it is an opportunity to experience the power of God in the midst of his people. It's, 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 it's not going to be possible to present a God that you have not tasted of the possibilities that are contained in him. It's one thing to know that the possibilities of God are encapsulated in this Bible. But it's another thing for your life to at least have a taste of it. You don't need to experience everything. But that God does something in your life. That you can now say, Kai God, now I know. I know. So the next time you are talking to someone and says, which God? You say, no, forget about the apostle. Look at my life. I'm now a testimony, an epistle that God is able to do this and that. Hallelujah. There is a spirit that makes believers to not focus on the ministry of the word. The spirit of distraction. You can even come to church and you'll be surprised that just because you are sitting and looking, you are learning. No. The Bible says that the sower sows the word. Right there, Satan is in the midst of, of, of God's people. Roaming around and looking for careless hearts. And he comes by himself and takes the word. So that you are ever learning. Oh, this topic. Ah, I know it. I remember Genesis chapter this verse this. But there is no evidence that shows that this has become spirit and life in you. So please let's challenge ourselves and say, Lord, it is true that I don't serve you just for results. But Lord, I'm determined. I'm determined to begin to see your hand in my life. If you see God's hand in one, two, three areas, and remaining four, five, six, you are encouraged. But where you get zero over six of God's hand, it's not enough testimony. Are we together? It is the word of God that builds. It is the word of God that gives men allocations in this kingdom. Like a domain. And the word of God allocates you. Come darling. And says you stand here. Come my dear. Stand here. Come. This is your place of dominion. You have believed in me enough. The word of God gives you your allocation in life. So this person starts somewhere and God says there is a seat I have given you in the prophetic and the word of God gives you that position. You stay there and you know it's an office backed up by God himself. No man will be able to stand against you. This one was apportioned by the spirit as a testimony not of your desire for ministry. Listen, as a testimony of your staying power with God. For as a prince you have power with God. You can roam around and say, God has called me into business. Life drives you out. You come again and say, God called me into family. And you roam around life and there is no space for you. He dug a well, they came and covered it. They say, it's not your space. He dug another well, they covered it. When he dug the first one, they gave him space. And he called it Rehoboth. He said, God has given me my own space. You need to have your own place in life dominion is territorial until you find your jurisdiction of dominion you cannot begin to walk in it you will hate people you will be angry you will quarrel people you will hate others that god is blessing in their area of dominion it is the word of god that allocates while the word of god is being taught mystery after mystery principle after principle the spirit of god is using the word to give men spiritual jurisdictions of power and relevance and so this lady hears that god is distributing this and then 
the call of God upon her life, locate her in the place of the call. And this one hears that God is lifting people in the area of business and God keeps her there. And by the time these people have been around God for a long time, you look at them and you see the grace of their office established in that dimension. This roaming around of believers without knowing the jurisdiction of your spiritual relevance is dangerous because satan can also mimic god and carry you somewhere that the equipping the wiring the spiritual configuration within you should not it does not allow you to be there and so they carry you and you die because you want to prophesy are we together now because the word of god did not give you the balance and the proper allocation your ego allocated you to a dimension you don't have grace for every prophecy you lied every prophetic command never came to pass and you find out you are frustrated and you stand and say lord what am i doing with my life I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you egg, lava, pupa, adult and then when you are now mature to give you a space are you getting what I'm saying now? an allocation yes, you're a medical doctor but I give you a space that you will carry the healing anointing to the nations you may be a doctor professionally but your destiny demands that you are working in this. How you know you are making progress in the spirit is that somewhere along the lines of your experience, you begin to see these spiritual allocations. You can know. God, where are you taking me to? Just follow. It first starts as a general prayer. It first starts as just studying the word of God to know him. Let me tell you, there is nobody that God puts ministry consciousness in him before he calls him. That's wrong training. The, you start on a neutral ground. Lord, I love you. I need your presence. I need your glory. Not I need a church. Not I need a title. Not I need a PA. Not Lord, I've suffered in this family. Won't I be rich? No, sir. God does not define the geography of men's assignments first. He allows them to begin to seek him on a neutral ground. And then on, on grounds of their faithfulness, when their hearts are locked to him, then the spiritual jurisdiction of their assignment, he starts to allocate it. And many times, depending on the jurisdiction, there are jurisdictions that will necessitate that you touch other dimensions before finally getting there. So God is calling you into an apostolic ministry, but you will start as an evangelist. For two years, you will be an evangelist. And then you will switch and be a teacher. And then you will be like a missionary. The final destination is here. By the time you build a camp there, I am evangelist Emeka. By the time that apostolic grace is coming, you will cause confusion. Because you are among evangelists, but they know that what you are doing is not evangelism. And you will start teaching based on your experience. And you will start saying the rest are wrong. Whereas it was your staying power in the training to allow you to get to the final destination. Please, place value on the word of God. Place value on the, not just the reading of the word. You have been reading it. Place value on its ability to give you something in life. Look, let me tell you this. If I am your physical father and I have a little estate and you are waiting for me to die so that they can they can share the um, what they call it get the death benefit and share the money listen to what I'm trying to say the physical land and the territory you have can be seized by the government as simple as that they just say we need it and who we'll think of what to do another government will say it was not me the past government has gone and never will come forever but when god gives you a spiritual inheritance no man no tribe they may hate you but my brothers and my sisters when a key is given to you the key is given in a way and a manner that god will cause nations to pass through that door it's impossible to ignore you these are the truths i have found there is rest when you find this. 
all this fear up and down how will my future be will i be great will i eat will my children eat those questions were designed to be answered naturally when you follow the pace of god's training there are many questions we ask now there are questions because we are jumping classes if you stay with god there are some questions you will not need to ask believe me the kind of questions you ask will tell you what kind of student you are when you are a proper student the responsibility of the spirit of god no there there you won't even know when you enter certain dimensions that others are praying for because your heart is with him and you're saying lord guide me curriculum after curriculum no rushing no comparison i stay with you five years others have moved forward they have jobs and they have this and you are moving around like a thief across the earth and say lord what am i god say you you are my son at least know that one for now even if you don't know what i called you to do behold what manner of love what what is greater than that one lord help me who am i i'm moving around like cain and god says don't let the devil cheat you just walk with me and in one year god will look at you and establish you with a grace and people will look at you and say ah, ah, i used to know pastor femi unfortunately you used to know him that him has died died in training and resurrected with another life the son of man in power and glory he passed through a doorway in the spirit called galatians 2 20. now he has come out with a new light a new grace are we learning something already god bless you bless you guys thank you we must have passion for the word of god i will touch a bit on something that i thought i would have the allowance to preach this year in fact when the lord put this in my heart i said oh lord but i've cried to you again and again to allow me preach this and um I honestly thought we'll be able to have the series um, but maybe tonight I may just do a little introduction on it um, it's very powerful very powerful God thank you thank you There are things when you find in this kingdom please listen to me there are things when you find in this kingdom god hell and men will know you found something there are things when you find only god will know you found it there are things when you find only men will know but there are things when you find god men hell will know but by, by his grace you have been given something and this is what i'm guiding you to understand do you know what i'm doing to you i'm reconstructing your understanding about god and the correct approach to life now you may not see the value in what you are receiving now but my brothers and my sisters give god time and be patient with yourself and watch the wonder that you become So tonight, I will just do an introduction of it, true riches. Just an introduction. It's not part one. We have a series next. We'll, 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 we'll transfer it to next year. But, and, and don't think I'm talking about money at all. Settle down and listen and let God bless you. Because when we hear riches, the first thing we think about because of the way i don't know if it's the way our country is, is going all the way you know once people just hear riches a lot of people are very happy this is a very spiritual teaching in fact riches is really spiritual luke chapter 16 and verse 11 luke chapter 16 and verse 11 read with me believers one two read Ah, that's not you. Be delivered from. Let's read one more time. One to read. Ah, 
Uh huh. Hold on. It's a question. Who will commit to you? So this one is not an achievement. People commit it to you. Listen. Who will commit to your trust the true riches? Unfaithful mammon. The word unfaithful suggests instability. Is that true? Something that is not reliable. And it says that if you are not faithful with the, in your righteous mammon, who will commit to your trust? When I saw this scripture, it blessed and changed my life. Who will commit to your trust? True riches. There's something in this kingdom called true riches. And the Bible says that the basis for access to it among other things is faithfulness listen very carefully and then that this dimension of spiritual blessings that the bible calls true riches is a commitment meaning that god observes and sees your faithfulness listen carefully he can allow you to do whatever it is that you're doing but whilst you're doing it he's observing you and that you get to a point where you pass that spiritual test and like a report card god calls you and says i give you something called true riches and he says that if you are unfaithful with unrighteous mammon who will commit to you that means aside from god who else has that access He's not just trying to tell you. The, he's saying who else? Who else can commit to you? This mystery that we call true riches. Thank you. Ephesians chapter 3. We'll read from verse 2 to 8. Listen very carefully. And you'll understand something powerful tonight. Paul is speaking now. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, verse 3. How that by revelation, listen, he made known unto me, what? The mystery. By revelation, he made known. I didn't search it out. He brought it and gave it to me. As I wrote a four in few words, we are reading to verse 8, verse 4. Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. 5. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. 7. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. Eight. <laughs> Listen, it says unto me, Paul now, Paul is looking at the excellency of what he has found and saying, Lord, do I deserve this? Listen, it says unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is this grace so it's a grace is this grace given what is the grace that i should preach among the gentiles help me the unsearchable riches not just the gospel that i should preach the unsearchable unfathomable riches look at the description that is used there he didn't say that i should preach the gospel that i should preach they, they are mysteries the bible says there is a grace that this grace can operate in a man and grant him uncommon understanding to these mysteries that the bible calls the unsearchable riches of christ these are very deep spiritual things. Listen. And these are the spiritual blessings by which the dominion of the saints is established upon the earth. That the dominion of the saints is not just established because all things have, you know, you have dominion. No, no. Prophetically, the dominion of the church has been established. But in experience, we are yet to come into the fullness of that understanding. 
Paul was speaking to the church, the Hebrew church, and he told them, he says, he was quoting Psalm, Psalm 8, you know, that you have put all things under his feet and all of that, and he says, but we do not yet see all things. The unsearchable riches of Christ. What is it? If I ask you, define for me, because this is in the Bible, this is the Pauline epistle, what is the unsearchable riches of Christ? Money, business, Naira and Kobo, no, sir. May God open your eyes. This is an introduction tonight, but may God open your eyes to see it. My brothers and my sisters, these are the commanders of dominion. These are the systems allocated for the dominion of the saints. The Bible calls it true riches. That man, there is a grace that God by observation, seeing your faithfulness, this one you can never find it. It's not just by fasting and praying. It's not just by reading a book. God comes to you as a reward for faithfulness and grants you a grace that opens you up to a mystery called the unsearchable riches of Christ. This is what the Bible calls true riches. What is it? That's why Paul, Paul was, remember Paul said, I thank my God, I pray in tongues more than ye all. So Paul would be lying if he told us he was spiritually lazy. That man was very diligent in the spirit. And when it came to this description, Paul was even broken. Seeing the level and the gravity of the spiritual investment made upon his life, he acknowledged that unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, was this grace given. That I should be the custodian to release this unsearchable mystery to the body. Until Paul came, no man had seen it. Not even the eye of those who walked with Jesus. They walked with Jesus. They saw many spiritual things, but their eyes could not see this dimension. And that's why Paul said, I didn't see him in the flesh. I was, I was, I was a murderer out somewhere. When Jesus was, I was not even part of the 70. And God just picked a young man on his way to Damascus. A donkey falls down. He knocks me and calls me and says, I want to give you. I want to allocate space for you in this dispensation that you are mandated to be the custodian the dispenser that's why he started by saying look when my teachings are hard don't criticize me there is a grace i received it god came to me by revelation and opened up to me this thing and he calls the name the caption of it is the unsearchable riches of christ I have cried and cried and told the Lord to take away useless knowledge from my life. That means profitless knowledge, both for me and for the saints. That God will grant me access to light and truths that are useful to help men and help my generation first to know him and then to be able to walk in the experience of his life. It's been my prayer it still is my prayer and so when the Lord opened me up to this I was so blessed let me tell you sincerely and and God is my witness and I tell you this I'm a, I'm a student I'm not ashamed when I learn things from people and I build you know I'm not I'm not somebody who is is, is, is arrogant to say all this and that I am a product of many 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 spiritual minds but when it came to these dealings the way I look at you is the same way God was opening me up to the world. See this. This is the key. The mystery that connects to this. And many times when I listen to people, fathers of faith, and I hear them teach, I say, God, this is what you were telling me. I say, because I'm the one who told them to. Not everything in your life will come by studies. I'm not teaching you to be lazy. But we are teaching, we are teaching, this is, this, is, this is a school of the spirit. Not everything in your life will come by studies and lecture. My brothers and my sisters, there are different ways God imparts knowledge to us. One of it is through the stillness of your spirit. Be still and know that I am God. And one of it is access, revelation, spiritual illumination. God just comes to you. 
and grants you access there are things i know today i don't know how i got it the same way you receive a prophetic word i just know that this came to me what are these unsearchable riches right these are the spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth these spiritual blessings these unsearchable riches what you call true riches they are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and manifest the reality of God's life here and now The spiritual blessings that provide an advantage there has to be a system in our dealings with God where we stand at an edge where we sustain an advantage it is not it is not something hidden that life is harsh my brothers and my sisters listen to me it is no secret that ministry without a spiritual advantage is simply a human pursuit of frustration men are not that kind to allow you excel without the assistance of the spirit realm mm -mm. from tribal sentiments to the gates of hell and their manipulations etc etc everything looks like it's against you you only rise and reign in life to the degree to which you sustain a spiritual advantage are we together now yes um come come doctor if you ask us to push ourselves and he's standing here he's already in a vulnerable position and then you provide a system of support and i'm standing here and someone is holding me these things are my advantage is that true now even if he's stronger than me if he tries to push me on the strength of these factors you see that i will get a dimension of results that is unfair because that's not the true reflection of my capability i have trusted systems that have provided an advantage and the bible tells us that these unsearchable riches they were designed by god as a proof of his love and his determination to see that the saints reign so he put together these systems so that by them we can stand strong and shout at the gates of hell and know that there is a spiritual fortification it is ultimately god that gives us victory my brothers and my sisters but the victory is broken into systems so you can know that god has given you victory and not understand the systems he provided and you find out that your life consistently continues to be a disadvantage are we together now bless you thank you so true riches i define are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and to manifest the reality of god's life here and now we're just doing an introduction romans chapter 5 and verse 17 the bible says that they which have received the abundance of grace everybody say the abundance of grace the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness it says they shall reign in life they shall reign in life they shall reign in life this is what validates the fact that we are kings revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10 revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10 and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed them should be it's a mistake there because these are the four and twenty elders redemption was not for them so they are speaking over the saints so the word us there is a mistake in translation 
redeem them to God by thy blood out of every kindred listen now every tongue every people every nation verse 10 and has made us now them you understand and has made us unto our God what kings and priests and the Bible says and we shall reign where on earth so God's dominion agenda is real he wants us to reign he wants us to manifest a dimension of the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the Christ now I hope you understand let's let's refresh ourselves with redemption realities that Jesus Christ came and said I am the way the truth and the life then he says that no man cometh to the father except by me is that true so Jesus is the door to the kingdom he is the only not even just many he is the only valid access point into the life of the spirit you can manipulate through all the routes into a life of spiritism but if you want to access the kingdom life jesus is the authorized channel not even an angel are we together now and then the bible lets us know that the 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 system that makes for salvation romans chapter 8 when 10 when you read from verse 8 to 10 you know the bible says that you confess with your heart the lord jesus you believe you will mouth the lord jesus you believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead then you are saved the moment you get born again watch this what does it mean to be saved as it were to receive new life very simple the bible says that there is a translation but much more than a translation the bible lets us know that this divine life the life we call zoe known by men as eternal life but it's more than eternal life it is god's life a quality not the kind the very life of god are we together now the bible says by the ministry of the holy spirit that that life is supplanted we are refreshing ourselves now upon the human spirit so that he that becomes joined to christ now becomes one spirit is a mystery known in ancient times as the salt covenant where two people wanting to enter an inseparable relationship bring salt all of them bring samples of their salt and they mix it together the condition for separation is that everyone must pick his salt are you seeing that now yes another example i've taught you is called the doctrine of interpenetration this is the mystery of marriage the mystery by which two people become one right so a separate entity called a man another separate entity called a woman by covenant they become one one not physically but one in the spirit recognized by god himself are we together now that's why the bible says let no man do asunder it put asunder is a warning because there are implications in the realm of the spirit are you getting what i'm saying now so man receives of that life so way the spirit of god and then among the many things that are that happen to man is that your capacity to now begin to comprehend spiritual things is quickened still by the ministry of the holy spirit and then the operation of the word the logos and the operation of the spirit of god begin in your life you begin to learn the ways of god and then the word of god begins to wash you huh? like you wash a cloth begins to purify your conscience and then your mind is educated again the light is driving out that darkness and gradually gradually by all those exercises conformity and transformation not impartation yet conformity and transformation these things will remain for a very long time in your life and then you begin to see the grace speaking are we together now because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge so it's a laborious assignment because not everything in your mind is of the devil there are things that are correct so god will not reset your mind and then he will do that only with your permission so it's possible to be transformed one degree in 10 years that's how slow you wanted god to take you are we together now so you find out that after 10 years the level of results that should accrue to a life that was diligent with god is not showing in your life 
God is limited by your yieldedness. Limited by your alignment. This is what now begins to separate believers into different cadres. And then of course now you bring the issue of the election of grace. People who by his predeterminate counsel, he has called into certain offices and dimensions. Usually God will do an unusual work in them. Are we together now? A work many times that is more than their personal yieldedness. That's why they can't take credit for it. It was an acceleration that came because of the assignment they are to provide. So they enter dimensions of the prophetic way before they start understanding what prophecy is. The only thing they have to do is correct their errors, not pray for new visions. They have been seeing it since. It's just that they have been interpreting nonsense. So what they are repenting of is not, it's not, it's not a hazy vision. There are people who even, they got born again and there and then, they started seeing visions. There and then. Others came from priesthood. A wrong key forced the door. To, you, you understand what I mean? A wrong key of spiritism and tradition opened a wrong door i hope you know that if you meet a native doctor and he opens your eyes even when you get born again the eyes will not close again it's been opened hmm. the only thing is you will hand over the lordship of that sight to god are you getting what i'm saying now because there is a spirit that becomes the gateway of your access uh, believers are you learning something yes to you, it looks like you are just seeing visions. No, there is a spirit that grants you access to that gateway. And there is an exchange that happens that you are not aware. For being granted access to see things in the spirit. And you are routing by a wrong door. You will not know because it's subtle. After 10 years, you find out that your soul has truly been sold to the devil. Are we together now? So when you get born again, it's true that your eyes were open with the charm. You will stop seeing the demons that oppressed you, but the realm of the spirit is already open to you. It's true. Systems of advantage that believers can access and God can grant them grace. Maybe let me just touch on two or three of them at least. We'll still do them next year. The unsearchable riches. These are the things that when I look at in my life, sometimes I just get down on my knees and I say, God, thank you. Thank you. You don't owe me anything you have been faithful. I found them and they are very powerful. Can I give you the first one? The first of these true riches, this mystery, is called the goodness of God. The goodness of God. What is this? You will know now that it is that grace that is released on you. If this grace is not present, you cannot have conscience. It is the goodness of God that is responsible to plant the need for repentance in men. Not mercy. Mercy has its place. The goodness. Everything I'm telling you, I'll show you from the Bible. You will now see why God told Moses, it is my goodness. I will allow you to see my goodness. The goodness of God allows for conviction of wrongs and repentance. But the goodness of God also allows for continual repentance. The word repent is not for sinners. I've told you this. It's not a word that is just left for sinners. It's a kingdom expression. A system of consistent realignment to a greater dimension of God's glory. It's called repentance. Let's look at a very serious scripture. Romans chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. Just write it down and let's read. We're Bible students. Romans 2 one to four ready i will tell you where to join me in the reading therefore thou art inexcusable O man whosoever thou art that judgest listen now carefully he's talking about judgment for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself for thou that judges does the same things too but we are sure that the judgment of god is according to truth against them which commit such things three and thinkest thou this, O man, 
that judges them which do such things and doest the same that thou shalt escape the judgment of God. Now look at verse 4. Read with me please. Or despised thou the what? Riches. Hold on. Stop. Let's not rush. Despised thou the... Remember we're talking of true riches. We're fishing them out now. That there is something called the riches of his goodness. What does it do? And forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leaded thee to repentance. If you ever repent, it is the goodness of God that came to you. It's not something you did by your strength to say, Oh, I think I... no, the, the fortitude to realize the need for alignment is proof that God has been good to you. This is the Bible, it says it is one of the two riches given to the saints the riches of God's goodness hmm. are we still together tonight did you know that the riches of God or the goodness of God is one of the true riches of the kingdom many people say ah oh God when the Bible says surely goodness we quote it every time surely goodness and mercy as if we are singing a special number this is a very deep mystery if the goodness of god does not go with you i will tell you i will show you people from the bible the state of a man who has not been granted access to these riches you will see what happens when god looks at people jesus looks and says you are poor in spirit that they are bankrupt he knew what he was saying they had food in their houses but there were certain attributes of the, the advantage of God given to the saints is not there in their life. Let me show you. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2. This is a portrait of men who have not been granted access to the riches of God's goodness. Read with me. One, two, read. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Uh -huh. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Do you know what this means? That means you have lost the ability to recognize. This is what happens to a man who can carry a knife and tear a pregnant woman, bring out a child and kill the person. And by the next day, he's moving and smiling. Let me tell you what that person needs is not revival. What that person needs is not even mercy. What that person needs is the goodness. One of the two riches sent like an errand when the goodness of God meets that person, he breaks down immediately through riches. The unsearchable riches of Christ. So God looks at men and sends his goodness to them. And all of a sudden, you see men translating from level to level. And they do not know what spiritual mystery is responsible for it. Keep that scripture again, please. Romans 2 and verse 4. the riches of his goodness not just his goodness the riches the wealth you see that a man who had this was david david knew the goodness of god that's why he became a man after god's heart lucifer didn't have this if Luc no no demon has this Lucifer was not given the privilege of accessing the goodness of God. So repentance is in it. It's not that he doesn't want to do it. Has he not been watching believers get born again in crusade grounds? Why didn't he say, God, I've watched this thing for a long time. Let's talk. You are my creator. No. It is the goodness of God that allows men to ever see the need for repentance. Hmm. Evangelists pray for this. If you are going for crusades don't just pray for signs oh god let them know i was called mm -mm. pray intelligently lord let there be a supply of the riches of your goodness and you will watch the wonder this is what happens in redemption camp when papa ia deboe preaches a simple message and says i will count one to five one and you see people run they don't even know what is bringing them out this is what the generals had Charles G. Finney. Are we together now? They had this in, in very abundant.
abundant measures they understood this wealth of the kingdom called the goodness of god when we say the goodness of god we just mean his ability to be benevolent is more than that the primary assignment of the goodness of god is to create awareness of the need to realign so that we become better reflectors of his glory the bible calls it his goodness second hmm. peter chapter 3 and verse 9 is somebody learning something tonight he says who shall commit to you if god opens your eyes and you see it and engage it then your life will change the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us what not willing that any man perish but that all should come to repentance this is god's willingness so he sees our family members and he already knows that the way they are going their lives can never reflect god and then his goodness some of you it was the goodness of god that brought you here to koinonia not invitation it was the goodness of god that gave you access to the teachings because god designed that you come to repentance first of salvation and then consistently realigning your life and then you see the beauty and the glory of god come out of your life say the unsearchable riches of christ hmm. let's try another So the goodness of God is an advantage in my life. An advantage. An advantage. What is the advantage? Causing me to consistently realign. So that I get to a point where my life becomes like the brightness of the sun. And people say, ah, ah what happened? And you say, God has been good to me. Now, the carnal man would think what you are saying is, God gave me favor. You understand what I'm saying? Or God made a helper. Or like our dear sister shared, God made somebody to give me miracle a lot. That's true. But what really happened was that he caused you to repent, to align, so that his glory can better find expression in your life. The riches of his goodness. The next time you see stubborn and rebellious people in your house, the key is not counseling. The key is intercession for a solid encounter with the goodness of god i i got to hear a very touching testimony of some of these are young people who are very stubborn and the family collected a loan trusting god to help them to start a life and the the young boy and his friend true story they went to carry the car of the the car of the the friend's father you know all these boys that carry cars just to explore their their whatever it is and this one would drive and pack and give this one to drive and pack they were changing and then when it was the turn you see how the devil you see when the goodness of him it was now the turn of the young boy who came from a poor family whose parents now collected loan thinking it will help them start life and the young boy it was his turn he was driving a car of his friend's father and there came a big truck it was a miracle that the boy survived and the family said i'm not hearing anything just get my car and bring for me that was how they had to look for I, these are people like counsel they had to add an extra look for money because it got to the police station and all of that you see that kind of thing and you will see the boy he will pass as if he gave his parents a word for taking first the goodness of god is not there that sense of remorse he has put the family in in trouble that it would take the prophetic to bring them out not business this one you can't come out just by business acumen it's going to take god to come and lift you out and yet you see the boys moving around and i was just looking at him and he was looking around no remorse Look at armed robbers that kill people in the night and by the next morning they pass the same house they rob and you see them smiling. During crisis, the people that kill people, do they die suddenly? 
They are alive. They pass a house that they know I'm the reason for the obituary in this house. And then they pass and laugh. They have not encountered the goodness of God. Let me tell you, it's not good to see somebody who has not partaken of the grace of the goodness of God. They are the people we call heartless, conscienceless, like some of the corrupt people that steal the money of Nigerians. This is what they need. Are we together now? Number two. Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 4, from 5 to 9. The second of the unsearchable riches is wisdom. Don't assume you know what I'm teaching. Just listen. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5. 1, 2, read. Question, where? Get pure water. Where? Um, shop. Are we together? Get pounded yam and soup. Where? Restaurant. Get injection for malaria. Where? Hospital. Get wisdom. Where? It's not that I don't want to get it. Where is it? Where do they find it? It says, get wisdom. Then get understanding. They go together. All through scripture. You see this. Now, um, next year I'm going to be teaching you spiritual operations. And one of it will be how spirits work. It's, they are all dimensions of the Holy Spirit. But you will notice that there are classifications. There is an operation of the Holy Spirit that never works as a person. Do you understand? It, it must be in twin, walking that way. It was the mystery that Jesus used in sending the disciples. He sent them two by two. Never sent them one. Everywhere you see wisdom, from Genesis to Revelation, you will see understanding going with them. And then sometimes they can form a tag team, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Three of them. A threefold cord. That whoever stands in the middle, it's only God that can take him out. When you stand in the middle of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, a fortification has been built that nothing designed by man can break that defense. Stronger than the wall of Jericho. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not. We're reading to verse 9. Listen carefully. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Uh -huh. Forsake her not. The Bible personifies wisdom. And she shall preserve thee, love her, and she shall keep thee. Seven. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, see it now again, get understanding. Now see the benefits. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. You know what honor is? Causing men to discern, acknowledge, and celebrate your relevance. The Bible says wisdom is in the office of wisdom to bring honor to men. When thou dost embrace her, last verse, it says she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace. You said you are a king, but where is your crown? Wisdom is the holder of the crown. It says she shall give a crown of glory. It is through wisdom we find glory. A king without a crown is not a king. In ancient times when they defeated cities, they not only removed the crown of the king, they removed his whole head and walked with it back to their city. A, a symbol. The moment the king was captured and his head taken, nobody fights again. The battle was over. And now the Bible says that the wisdom shall give you a crown of glory. I can say I am a king, but where is my crown? That there is a spiritual blessing that holds the crown of those who will reign in this life. And the Bible says it is called wisdom. 
Proverbs chapter 8 is going to be a long reading. Be patient with me. Be patient with me. I want us to pray tonight. These are the systems that will make your life worth living, will make your life meaningful by every standard. Proverbs chapter 8, doth not wisdom cry. Look at how merciful God is to the extent that wisdom now goes around looking. The Bible says wisdom is crying. Crying because of the foolishness of men and what their lives are becoming as a result of lack of accessing her. It says an understanding. Are you seeing them together? Wisdom is crying, understanding is adding her voice. Next verse. Reading to the end. Two. She standed in the top of high places by the way in the places of the paths. Three. Let's hurry up. She cried at the gates. The place of exchange. Where men enter and go out. Wisdom says, don't pass without me. Don't return without me. At the entry of the city. At the coming eat at the doors. Four. Unto you, O men, I call. Wisdom is speaking. And my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple. Simple there does not mean humble. Simple means unwise. Meaning there is, there is no fortitude for comprehension. It says understand wisdom. And ye fools be of an understanding heart. Hear for I will speak excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. Seven. For my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. Eight. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness and there is nothing forward and perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver. Hold on. If I give you wisdom and I give you silver, wisdom says, please don't be foolish to choose silver. Leave silver fast and come to me. And knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies. Two things the Bible says are better than rubies. One wisdom, two a virtuous woman. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Uh huh. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions. I hope we have the grace to continue. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom i am understanding i have strength please read by the spirit this is what i want you to do. now wisdom is giving you a manifesto like a gentleman trying to ask a lady out and he's trying to convince her and give her reasons to say yes to him and he's saying by me kings reign if you see any king reigning on earth this is what enthroned him wisdom you see any king reigning in business, in ministry, is not just God. Wisdom. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. 16. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those who seek me early will find me. That means it's not cheap to find wisdom. He gives you a time to seek. Riches and honor. You see why he said you should not choose silver? Because riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. Will soon be there. That I may cause those that love me to inherit. Talk to me. I cause those who love me to inherit. Substance there is not money. Substance there is results. Tangibility. I will fill their treasures. Go ahead. The Lord possessed me. So this is how creation happened. Through wisdom a house is built. Wisdom is saying the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old. 
Next verse. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth. Three more verses or two. Then I was by him ah, as one brought up with him and I was daily his delight rejoicing always before him rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth and my delights were with the sons of men last verse now therefore unto me O ye children Hearken to me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Wisdom. One of the unsearchable riches that people can possess wisdom and he's saying even God used me for his results. That means you are not going to be able to produce any kind and any dimension of result without wisdom. What is wisdom? The ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom. Not the knowledge of it. Not the comprehension of it. The ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom is called wisdom. What is wisdom? The ability to use the word to produce supernatural results. That's wisdom. My brothers and my sisters, I can show you scriptures upon scripture. We are doing an introduction today. Supernatural wisdom that happened to men. They rose on account of that wisdom. Let's look at one scripture. First Kings chapter 3. Solomon. God's portrait of wisdom. You see that every once and again, these men obtain one or more of these attributes. And that's what they used to do business in the earth realm. And they, they dumbfounded the wisdom of men. First Kings chapter 3 and verse 9. We're reading to verse 13 from verse 9. Solomon is praying now. God is asking him, what should I do? And he says, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. To judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Verse 10. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. To 13. And God said to him, because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself, what? Long life. Neither hast thou asked, here it is again, unfaithful mammon riches for thyself nor hast thou asked the life of thy enemies but thou hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment 12 behold i have done according to thy words let's see what god gave him i have given 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 i have given thee a wise and an understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee neither after thee shall rise on any unto thee i have also given thee that which thou hast not asked both riches and honor so that there shall not be any among the kings you see that every time kings were there wisdom understanding go to chapter 4 from verse 29 go to chapter 4 and verse 29 chapter 4 first kings and verse 29 read with me please one to read and God gave, go ahead, Solomon, wisdom, uh-huh, and understanding exceeding much. 
and largeness of heart even as the sun that is on the seashore the manifesto the attributes of all these spiritual blessing next verse and solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of egypt uh-huh for he was wiser than all men than ethan the ezrahite than heman than Kalkol, than dada all these guys are champions of wisdom they were noted for walking in strange dimensions of wisdom and his fame was in all nations round about 32 for he spake three thousand proverbs and his songs were a thousand and five worship team you see how songs come an encounter with the spirit of wisdom believe me one song that will cause the nations to bless you have you not seen that music artists write songs out of 50 they are like two three you know this is not human you know it by the way it lasts anything that is human has the characteristic of fading the moment time has no power over it it came from the realm of the spirit there are songs that were written when we were born and we're still singing it there were songs that were written last month we're tired of it it tells you the dimension it's not that there, there's something wrong with the song the dimension from which the song came if it is that which is of the earth is earthy that which is of heaven is heavenly 33 and he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in lebanon even unto the high soap that springeth out of the wall he spake a lot he spake also of beasts and of fowls and of creeping things and fish i think there's one more verse and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of solomon from all kings of the earth does this look like gentiles shall come to thy light and their king to the brightness of your rising meaning there is what a man can possess my brothers and my sisters you may be in a shrine or you may be in a in a room that is made of mud blocks but kings will come when you possess what kings cannot buy they will come to you the last thing i'm going to do is to show you where wisdom stays because wisdom has a location job chapter 28 from verse 12 true riches when god wants to help a man he exposes you to the unsearchable riches of christ when you possess them you will look weak and frail my brothers and my sisters but when you begin to engage these systems of the kingdom your life becomes a wonder you see do you know why i'm taking our time to teach you these things <clears throat> so that you are not afraid of your results when you don't know the basis of the results that god gives you even that result will make you afraid because you are not sure of the system of defense around it are we together now but where shall wisdom be found remember i asked us a question he said get wisdom and i said where so job now the man of wisdom wisest richest job is having a conversation where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding have you seen that they always go together next verse man knoweth not the price thereof neither is it found in the land of the living ah, where is the land of the living that means it's not found here it's not a commodity that is affordable in any market let no man deceive you that he knows where wisdom is found in this earth Mm -mm. it cannot be found the earth does not have the capacity to produce this it can produce sophia human wisdom that is a derivative of trial and error and science but not the wisdom that comes from above the depth said it is not in me the sea said it is not with me that means all these things go back all these things are storage devices on earth they hide things the depth there are things that the depth keeps and those who know it can say bring it out that's why the prophet can stand and look at the ground and say oh earth he said let the people praise thee this earth is not barren 
let the people praise thee this earth will start yielding meaning that fruitfulness was hidden in the earth no wonder seed time and harvest was tied in the similitude of the principle of the earth the earth hides fruitfulness water hides abundance you read your bible everything the birds of the air and everything came out of water and so they said the depth said it is not with me the sea said it is not with me next verse it cannot be gotten for gold neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof Uh uh-huh it cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, nor with the precious onyx, nor the sapphire. Next verse. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Twenty whence then cometh wisdom and where is the place of understanding he listed all the choice places in the earth where we can find treasurable things and he says that wisdom is not there seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living and kept close from the fowls of the air destruction and death say we have heard of his fame hmm. look at this destruction and death also give testimonies that they say we have even us we are still surprised as we destroy people and kill people we have noticed that whoever possesses this mystery escapes us freely he said we have heard of the fame thereof with our ears that means destruction is a spirit not an event it's a spirit it can come upon a family and leave out its characteristics good understanding god understanded the way thereof that's the secret only god understands the way and he knoweth the place thereof Hmm. no just just stop at 23 god understanded the way that means if you ever see any man with that dimension of wisdom who gave him that's why i told you it is it is a grace this is not something you walk education cannot give it no when men possess this dimension of wisdom god gave it to men is one of the unsearchable riches of christ solomon possessed it and he did wonders ordinary men have been granted access to this mystery and you can see a very young frail person but carrying something ancient that was with God at creation and wisdom is justified by her children the results show you that this is not human my prayer is that somebody will will catch a dimension of this grace the wisdom of God that you will arise with it my brothers and my sisters and you will see Sheba and her bounties come to you that the things that you seek will come to you of their own accord believe me Satan has deceived us to chase after things God never designed that we chase after things these are the commanders of dominion when you possess them it is impossible there is a testimony even from the realm of the spirit You don't have to plan to be great. You just possess this and watch what they do to you. The Bible says she shall bring thee. In other words, I can find wisdom from a small room. And wisdom says follow me. Like Peter following an angel. I step into the place of great men and I say what am I doing here? And wisdom says this is where I live. Whoever possesses me will live with me. And you will eat the bread of kings. Because wisdom brought you there. But how many people desire the wisdom of God? So many people will tell you this is an interruption. There are many men of God that will not focus. Listen, many young Nigerians will not focus to listen to the wisdom of God. Just go, all these pastors, you are just lucky, you are anointed, you are anointed, that's all. Let me hustle my life. No, sir. No, sir. Except the Lord builds a house. 
they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the bible declares that the watchmen watch it but in vain he said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he giveth his beloved sleep when god gives you wisdom your eyes will see things and it will surprise you what god will make out of your life no man's anger can change what the wisdom of god does in your life let me tell you this learn this early in life whether people believe in you or not it has no effect whatsoever on the forces of the spirit working in your life if you ever look at a man holding this unsearchable riches of christ your anger is just beginning you will be angry till you die it will not do anything because death is the last enemy to be destroyed so if death testifies that i've hands up then you two hands up quickly that is one of the forces that was upon a pale horse in revelation one of the four horse riders and it gives up and says no this one is above my power and above my dimension wisdom knowledge maybe let me give us one last one the unsearchable riches of Christ true riches are you ready? <laughs> the hearing ear listen access to the voice of God is one of the mysterious riches of the kingdom the Bible says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit sayeth the spirit sayeth the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times are we together now some shall depart from the faith he says giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons in the the spirit speaketh expressly that means one of the greatest you are at a point of advantage the hearing ear has nothing to do with the prophetic office it is a grace that god washes your ear with high eyesight so that you have the hearing ear is it not in your bible that thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way why because there is a way that seemeth right if all ways were fair and right there would be no need for direction the hearing ear is a desperate prayer that everyone must cry unto god and say lord as i'm starting ministry give me the ear that hears let me tell you this listen i have studied the church in nigeria for many years i have studied the church in africa I have studied men and women of God and respectfully so I am amazed at the way people move this way when the Holy Ghost moved that way and their ministries ended overnight not sin not disobedience but that the Spirit of God is going because the anointing goes where the Spirit is going wherever the voice of God is that's where his power is so if god's voice and power is going left and you are going right even if it's sincerely so that's the end of it my brothers and my sisters let me tell you your spiritual investment of 20 years can crash in one day if you are not given the gift of a hearing ear you will appreciate this in years to come the higher you rise in ministry the more desperate you must cry moses said don't send us from here moses was not a fool with a rod in his hand 
thy rod and thy staff he said no way if you will know i need to know you are there just because god said move left yesterday does not mean he will say move left today you must hear him part time and there is a grace i have studied this subject of hearing god properly i can tell you hearing god even prophets have problem with hearing god let me tell you something about hearing god the gift of prophecy the hearing that comes to prophesy is not the same hearing that comes to give you direction you can walk in accuracy i can look at your name call your number call everything and you will be surprised how stranded you will be to hear the voice of god most people don't know because many people are, are prophesying nonsense and lies the hearing ear i i have a lot of friends and 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 by god's grace i've met very powerful and accurate prophets and you will be amazed at how stranded they are waiting for god to speak on matters in their lives and yet the accuracy that comes from them makes you believe that oh they are just lying down no where was the hearing of the son of the prophet who died and his wife was about to be taken the children were about to be taken the man was a prophet read your bible and see how many prophets were stranded be careful let me tell you this one day i will teach you how human beings spiritually are like machines i will teach you how god works with men so that just because a man is prophesying and dispensing mysteries let me tell you sincerely okay let, let's put it this way let's use midwives right have you noticed that you can see a midwife who has been giving birth helping people give birth for years and then when she is now pregnant you can be so surprised at the difficulty that she goes through and you are wondering madam with this experience right after her giving birth that almost took her life she will display that mastery again in the hospital prophets cry it's amazing how confused prophets can be i will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower listen and i will hear what you will say unto me read your bible and see people who missed very vital seasons in their lives although their gifts and their graces were still there when i learned this i learned this mystery from dr dk olukoya i was listening to him some years ago and he said something he said that one of the greatest prayer you can pray is for a hearing ear and i said what is the meaning of that and you see if god helps you and you walk in a dimension of these graces you must be careful because most times we see the flamboyancy on the gift and you can join men even to deceive yourself that just because that gift that prophetic operation is at work it necessarily means you yourself are accurate it's not true have you not seen people dying of infirmity and healing others what is the mystery behind it if, if you understand what i'm this thing is a very deep teaching that's why the bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling one of the unsearchable riches of Christ is a grace that can be given to men that you hear the sounds of the Spirit. You stand and watch and say, I've heard him. God is saying, go left. And everybody is saying, go right. Use common sense. You know you heard God. When you move left, after five years, people look at you. I have seen a bit of what hearing God can do this ministry today my brothers and my sisters is proof that when men get this unsearchable riches you won't go down i'm not one person who comes all the time and say god said god said i'm very careful now we have especially we young people we have abused god said anybody just comes and says god said just because you felt like god said no 
or just because you were under the anointing and your mouth was talking there are tongues of men there are tongues of angels there is the voice of god are you getting what i'm saying now this is very powerful you must learn it there are times when i hear god speak everyone around me knows god has said the voice of god comes with the spirit of faith if it is god that you hear the voice of god will always come with the spirit of faith hmm. and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me it's impossible to hear god and remain and sit down there no here and there you can think you had god and he said go to kano you can say i know i had kano but tomorrow you just turn but you know god is very faithful he will allow you he knows we are students in the school of the spirit just keep playing around but the day his majestic voice lands on your life there is no power that can stop you let me tell you god is not always speaking god speaks but he's not always speaking a lot of people keep say god is always speaking no sir are you always talking at least you were created in his image no in the fifth day of the sixth month the word of the lord came the word of the lord came the word of the lord came i've had occasions where god has spoken to me and you have seen it even some of the messages there are messages here that god gave me the titles and i was i've been surprised at how they seem to have carried an unusual grace because god said it i stand here many times and i tell you this is what god is saying and then you begin to see the strange things that he is doing let's be careful with this god said let's not reduce god to become a man now it doesn't mean that you can hear things there is the knowing of the spirit there is the witness of the spirit they all look like voices you have to be very deep in the spirit to separate between impulses and speakings they are very different just because you had a spiritual communication does not mean god spoke remember that in the realm of the spirit the voice is not the only way to speak light is a way of communicating love is a language it can speak so i can hear that's the reason why regardless of how sure you think you are stay for verification when god spoke about koinonia to start three days we had set up the departments god has granted us grace i remember if you remember that time i was telling you god told me this and that and that people will come from nations and people this is what god said i remember saying it that time as at the time i said it i said i saw cgc this is not what i saw i saw it broken expanded what is this that i'm seeing i saw people standing parking filling the roads and you know like as usual every time you said god said you need grace yourself to believe it because there are times that you just sit and say okay now i'm calm it's like you you smoked uh, uh, what they call this thing and so you went high and to you you can even say look at the nonsense that i said and you listen to your own message and say hey, it's not exactly god and god said what are you saying i'm the one speaking we were preparing to start packaging our messages i was thanking god and trusting and blessing him for the anointing he had given me and just saying oh god thank you because you are going to use our media ministry as a very major stream of income to bless the ministry and lift us and here comes the voice of god no in this season you are not going to sell your messages facebook that time it was i mean it was even the first head of media's facebook page and he said just carry your messages and put them on mp3 put them on facebook don't put the videos just the audios and i will give it wings and it will go to the nations of the earth that's it my brothers and my sisters when god says sit back and watch the power that created the universe push things in your life there are things god has said listen to me there are things god has said when god talks notice that god doesn't care what you are seeing he tells you what you will do and he will do it 
So I stand upon my watch. I'm not in a hurry to move. God, what are you saying in this season? That's the reason why we have workers retreats. That's why we have our own retreats. A few weeks now, I'm going to start my end of year retreat. I'm telling you, you don't know how excited I am at that time. Because many of you have gone. No disturbances. I just shut my phone. And sometimes you need to get out of the busyness of life to hear God. Because there is, as it were, many voices, many sounds. And none of them is without significance. The voice of house rent can interrupt what God is saying. This spiritual haziness has a science. The encumbrances of life can push you, your child's school fees, your life. And God is saying, fast for three days. I say, is it God? Is it a demon? Is it? Yes, there are times that you check against the word of God. But let me tell you, there are times only God will help you. Because even you, you don't know whether this is God again. Most people are not spiritual enough to get to this realm. That's why they don't understand. Years ago, I've shared with you the story. I had limited transport fare from Kaduna back to Zaria. And I took initiative and I went and ate yam and beans also with the money. I mean, why sit here till we die? Remember the four lepers. At least I should do one. I already know that it's only God that will know how to take me back home. And I believed with all my heart that I was acting by faith. And I did. And I stood in front of the junction near Waek office in Kaduna. And a car just stopped and the Holy Spirit told me, enter. Public transport, oh. I told you the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. It's until the act has been done. When you turn back on hindsight, you say, it has to be God who led me like this. When you are passing through it, you don't see the gravity of the faith you are exerting. It's when you look back and say, eh. I entered that car. I was just in rest. Rest. You are supposed to be afraid. You know how some of these our brothers are around and all of that. Until we pass Jaji, I knew there was no hope. You know, if it's 10 naira you don't have or 20 naira, you can beg. But I mean, when well, well, you don't even have up to 20 or 30 percent of what is the transport fare, and then they now said, Everybody bring your money, and people were bringing their but my God is my witness, my heart was at peace. This is what happens when it's God that is speaking. You leave him to be responsible for the word. I just obeyed. And that was how someone brought out, paid my transport fare. I dropped at flyover here, entered the bus, happy because I felt at least whatever it is, this one I'll pay. And someone knew me in the car and paid. I stopped in front of Northgate with the same money I was with there. It was a message. God was saying, look, I am God by myself. I can do it anyhow. There are times I can send a helper to give you money. There are times I say the helper is in the car. Enter and meet him there. It doesn't matter where the helper is. Believe God enough to go. There are times he parts the waters. There are times he says, walk on it. Let it just be that he sees him. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You will need this for ministry. When God sent us to go for our crusade, we got up and moved like madmen. What you see today, my brothers and my sisters, is a product of the voice of God. You need the grace to hear God, not grace for prophecy. Lord, let me hear you. you, you, you look, you can pray and say, God, search my frail person. What is the most accurate spiritual mechanism of communicating your voice to me? Help me in that area. There are some of you that your hearing, you have not trained your hearing. If, you, if God speaks through your ears, you will not hear. And so you are going to say, Lord, give me a kind of dream that I will wake up and find myself standing. I will know that this one was not a dream. Let me tell you, if your heart is right, God will give you. There are dreams that no devil can tell you in your mind. Mind? How many of you have had what we call prophetic dreams? You know this one 
It's not my mind. This is the voice of God. Unsearchable riches. The hearing ear. The seeing eye. One time, the storm was boisterous. I think it was Peter or Paul. And it was very obvious they were going to capsize. And all of a sudden, the hearing ear and the seeing eye. An angel appears to him and speaks to him and says, Don't worry, there shall be no loss. And he calmed the people down and said, Hey, relax. An angel has appeared to me and he has said to me that there shall be no loss. And the Bible says that the storm calmed down and they went safely and arrived at an island called Melita. When you hear God, you can sit in the midst of fire and be singing. And people are saying, excuse me sir, this is fire. You say, no, I'm sitting on the voice of God. Roasting someone by your left, roasting another person by your right, and acting as if the fire is not seeing you. Sooner or later, you will need this message. Sooner or later, you will carry destinies. Come darling. You will carry destinies that are behind you. And you will need to hear God on behalf of them. One day you will have children. One day you will have grandchildren. And that day, this spiritual blessing will be tested. One day you will be a man of God with a crowd of people. Now all of you are waiting for the prophetic word next year. Whether I tell lies or not, you will believe. It's left for me and God. And if I lie, you will punish me. Are you seeing how risky it is? Many of you say, we are praying for you. But you know you are not even serious about what you are saying. Because you are saying, Apostle, <laughs> the God that called you. How you have been hearing him before. Let him help you. Just make sure you hear well for us. You hear wrongly as a man of God for members. And see the way their lives. They will obey you against God. Just because you are fasting for a long time does not mean that your ears will hear. It's a grace. Like earphone. God will just put that spiritual earphone and start dictating. This is how 2019 will be. Do this. Do that. Do this. Do that. And you say, God, but like, like Eliab, this is good. And God says, that's exactly the strategy Satan wants to use next year. Use this route. And you come out. And you say, people, we are ready to go. And they look at you and say, ah, just like that. And God says, don't mind them. That's always how, that's how the nation of Israel was. That's why Moses was angry because he would suffer and hear God and come and talk to them and they would doubt. Husband, please learn to hear God for your wife and your children. Otherwise, one day God will be saying, move left. And you come with your degree and masters and phd nothing wrong you move left until life changes you in one position change your wife change the destiny of your children many of us sitting down here if our parents had god you shouldn't be at this level is that true there are a number of us we are going to pray many of us we are victims of the lack of hearing Many of our parents were called into ministry. They ran away, not hearing. And the blessing that would have come to us, if they obeyed God, it would have been easy. You would have been born again since four years. But their disobedience, now you got born again at 31. Look how hard it is for you to learn the things of the kingdom. The hearing ear is a grace. Man of God, please whatever you will do with god i don't care what is not going on in your life if you can hear god hear god on who to marry hello hear god on who to marry you if god planned four children and you give birth to seven you will take care of four he supplies he supplies follow his voice i know you think i'm laughing this is how our lack of spirituality has cheated people in the world. Before kings went for war, they would inquire of the Lord. Is it in your Bible? Shall we go? And God would say, go. And give them the strategy. We have lost this in our generation. So we just step out and, and 
life just beats us into nonsense what of relocating a place where you want to be domiciled in where your family will be raised in you don't hear god i've told you that when the devil wants to destroy some people he will give them visa visa to germany visa to europe just because the interview was easy doesn't mean it's god there are times that satan can give favor to kill you there used to be a guy who used to drive me years ago like maybe four five years ago he was desperate to go to germany i said what is it for i got to find out that he did one funny arranging thing where you do some kind of marriage with somebody there on contract then you come prepare papers and then fight divorce and then from there you have your papers and i don't know where that guy is now but he's a classic representation of grace to grass there are pastors that started well they kept navigating ministry well mighty men and women with anointing and then something happened in their life they didn't hear correctly or they didn't hear or they went based on the pride that results can bring no matter who you are if you trivialize the voice of god your head must touch the ground i'm telling you this it doesn't matter what level you get to in life and ministry please hear god as if you are just starting don't say because god has given me this my name is joshua selman god has given me results in ministry if you hear me talk to you like this i know what i'm saying lord should i pursue lord is this your will for me is this your will for me oh there's one conference that i have many great men and women of god some my friends around within this nation around and sometimes they have innocently felt apostle let's put forth a program let's put forth this and that and that people have come to tell me apostle what are you waiting for it's in the blueprint of the ministry to start sunday services what are you waiting for i remember one prophet of god very powerful prophet of god met me and said what are you waiting for start church and i just looked i said god bless you but this year I can't claim I hear everything, but my goodness, there are things this ear can hear. We are going to pray, and when it's time to pray, you are going to cry. If it means you laying hands on your ears to say, Lord, I am reaping the fruit of my not hearing you. It's very clear that my life is the way it is now. Because I'm not hearing you. Are we together? You need to hear God when you begin to hear multiple voices calm down none of them is god let me give you a big secret i don't care what you are trying to hear the moment you are hearing multiple voices shut down none of them is god the majesty and the jealousy of god will not allow you to hear many things his voice is mighty upon the waters when you start hearing many voices rose magdalene mary Janet, shut down my friend you are not hearing god just shut down lord what is the devil trying to do you are going to abuja today next tomorrow you are praying and it's like you saw the map of kano and then it's like you now saw london <clears throat> shut down lord what are you saying please hear what i'm i'm teaching you this based on the word and based on experience most people who get into trouble ignore the voice of god consciously somewhere along the journey this is true for marriage this is true for jobs this is true for geographic locations there are men of god that just stand up and go somewhere and just say well after all i'm, I'm a believer in christ i love the lord we are going to plant this church here and they find out they are struggling for a very long time it was bishop oyedeko that was saying how that there was a time that they started the church in ghana living faith was blossoming doing very well and they started the church in ghana and there was so much struggle after like four was it five years or six years or so the increase was not there and he was struggling everything he said he went there by himself to preach and still nothing worked and he went back and said god what is the problem and god said i am not there and he said shut it down immediately There are some of you from this message tonight you need to go and shut down a lot of things in your life because if you check it you will find out there's nothing wrong if you thought it was god you are a student in the school of the spirit oh i thought this business was god but now i'm hearing this is not god 
I thought that it was God that said I should start the ministry. I remember years ago when my well friends and all of that, you know, not really close friends would meet me and say, Apostle, with the kind of grace you have, start a TV ministry. Start this. I told you about PFN. When we had our first crusade, PFN was willing to give me pastors and give me an auditorium to say, start, start a church. We need you. Be careful. Not every good thing is God. Things don't have to be bad for you to leave them. Sometimes they can be good. They are just not God. There was a time I was preparing, taking my bath years ago. I had a meeting. I don't know if it was in Kaduna or one of these places. I had prayed, fasted, prepared a powerful message. As, as I was taking my bath, all of a sudden, my peace, I will come to that, will discuss peace. Peace as one of the mysteries in the kingdom to bail men out. The stubbornness of men will not allow them understand how the peace of God works. He said he will speak peace. Peace is a voice. Peace can warn you and say you are landing in hot water. Peace can tell you, man of God, this association you are joining is what will destroy you. It doesn't mean they are fake. It doesn't mean they are not of God. But this association is what will bring down your grace. Man of God, be careful. Peace. That's why I told you that these are the systems by which the saints dominate. So you can see that you can have a dream and in your dream you saw a Mecca dying. But in the physical, it will never happen because there is a mystery that shields him. The dream you saw was the intention of Satan. But there is a fortification of a mystery. You can have a dream and see Joshua Selman dying in a motor accident and start praying and say, hey, so this is how our apostle will die. <laughs> I, I guarantee you it will remain as a dream. You don't know what is covering this man that is standing. It's not pride. Do you know how many times death has tested me? Oh. Make him ma, make him ma, make him ma. Make him ma, make him ma, make him ma. have been unfaithful not faithful with unrighteous mammon who shall commit to your trust the true riches of the kingdom these are the mysteries we do ministry with these are the mysteries by which kings rise and you look at a man and you see the wonder that his life emits and you are saying my god how is this thing working my brothers and my sisters, these are the systems. Paul said, me who I am the least of all the apostles was this grace given. That I become a communicator of the unsearchable riches. I have learned these things and they have helped me. They have delivered me from evil. That prayer, lead us not into temptation but deliver us. One hearing from God can deliver you and deliver your children's children. Our parents went head on. Some of them were the colleagues of some of the men of God in Nigeria today. And had they continued hearing God well, they would have given us a good footing. But the inability to hear. I have seen pastors, men of God that I knew years ago. Men of fire. And seen them and their shadows of themselves. How can a man's yesterday be better than his tomorrow? Because of one of these spiritual blessings. No wisdom. Some of us have lost destiny helpers that can change our lives. Because of the wisdom to be given to navigate friendship. Are you ready to pray tonight? The meaning of your name in your language means thank you.
The meaning of your name means thank you. Thank you. You're a guy. Thank you. Is a brother, tall brother. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Hallelujah. Now, listen. There is a lady. This is a very interesting case I want to call. The Lord is ministering to me. Listen. Listen. Not only do you see snakes in your dreams, you see them physically around you. This has happened in a long time. Who is that person? Please. You see snakes physically. Physically. This happens physically. It's your time of deliverance. Now, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Please. The person is around. The person is here. Come out quickly, please. Save our time. We have a lot to do. Who is that person? You are the one? Physically. Come. Come up. There's another person. You? Come. Come. Two of them. Come now. Hurry up. Look at me. You see physical? Yes. Since when? No, no mic. Huh? Eh? That was last year and we didn't really see it too. Where do you see the snakes? In my dreams. Sometimes maybe when I go out, I see them on the way. You see them physically. What of you? I see them in my dreams. Are you married? Do you know why? This is what we must destroy this night. You, your deliverance will start now. Praise God. Ah. Out. Come out of hand now. Out by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, the snake you are seeing is a man that turns to a snake for you. Right now, I, I, I just saw him in the spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Leave her now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out. Come out now. Out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Out. Tonight is your night of liberty. This lady. See. Because I am seeing and while I stood, the Lord was ministering to me. And the Lord was telling me that they have made a projection that this lady will never marry. Any man that comes around this lady, this is what destroys him. This lady you are seeing. Nobody likes her. For whatever reason, nobody can know. Right now, leave her in the name of Jesus. Come out now. The snake you are seeing. Leave her right now. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You brought the picture, two pictures. Listen. Listen, wait, let me describe it before you come out. You brought two pictures. Two pictures of your family members. Two different pictures. You came and stood. Who is the person? Two pictures. I mean, one, one. Two pictures. You are here with two pictures of your family members. Who is that person? The Lord is ministering to me because there is... I need to pray on one of them. You brought two pictures of your family members. Please, when we have that person, come up. What are these people here for? Oh, I called you. Snake. I, I left her because we are going to deal with this. Janet. Where is Janet? Where is Janet? Three of you are Janet. You are from Kogi State. Who is from Kogi? There is somebody from Kogi. Janet. Kogi State. Is it Kogi? I think Kogi. Is Kogi. Please. Please. The Lord is ministering to me. Let's save time because I don't want you to tie down somebody's. I want God to grant us grace to minister. Your name is Janet. Your mom's name is Janet. You are from Kogi State. Come. Because I see they want to kill your mother. Lift your hands. That 
your mom's name is Janet. I will pray for you so that she will be free. Where, what's wrong with her? We need to pray for her. Huh? Because I'm first seeing sickness and then I'm seeing a ghastly motor accident. We must pray for her. The power of God will come upon you and it will touch her. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, by your mercy, right now, let your power set him free. My brother, I break the curse of witchcraft in your family by the power of the Holy Ghost. Okay, hold my hands. Let me pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My dear, let me pray for you. This thing called bad luck must live your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ, be free. Totally free. I'm interested in your case. Let me pray for the rest. Which of your family members is here? If you are in her family, come and stand here. God is going to visit the whole family now. Our family, if you are not part of our family, don't come here, please. If you are part of our family, just come and stand here quickly. Please, let's save time. Sister, look at me. Salvation has come to your life today. This, your crying is over. Are you hearing me? Because... This, I must pray. This lady's family, she has suffered. You will just see a lady standing like this. That God will pick a lady out because this is, I'm seeing hardship. Yes, sir. Where are you from? From Berry. What's your father doing now? Nothing. What's your mother doing? Nothing. Look at this. How did I know? Do I know her? Because this is a cause of hardship. There's nothing that they do that will prosper. But tonight, in the name that is above all names salvation comes your family realize that as it's happening for one person it's happening to you too in the name of the lord jesus hold my hands do you know what i want you to do shout hold my hands shout jesus at the top of your voice can you do that jesus! family come power in the name of Jesus. We are going to pray. Two things the Lord wants me to pray. Number one, your mother will not be a widow. Are you hearing me? We are going to pray. We are going to break that power. Number two, there is a cause of delay in this family that will be lifted. Now, is that true? Am I making sense? There is a cause of delay. Hold your hands together. Oh, you are an usher. When I pray for you, go and continue with your work. Praise God. There is a cause of delay. Father, in the name of Jesus, you ask me to call this family out. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I release them from this devilish shackle of delay. There is a power of God upon my hands. I'm going to lay it upon you. As it comes upon you, it will terminate this delay. Shekata balata kata balakata balada bos. Randa brecha kata balaku soprondo sobreha. Delay begun. You especially. Delay. I cause delay. Delay in school. Delay in everything. I cause it in the name of Jesus. And forgetfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. You. Where are you from? Kaduna. You are from Kaduna. I need to pray for you. Hmm? You are not feeling very fine. Hold my hands. This is a devilish thing. Thank you, Jesus. Release her right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Stephanie, 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 Stephanie. Do we have anybody like that? Stephanie. That's the person. Bring the person in.
I mean, that was the other one person. Remember our two people. Break every chain. Hallelujah. We are going to pray for miracle jobs this night before the end of the program. Hallelujah. Enough is enough. Praise God. We are going to pray for jobs. Two ladies, you and you, two of you talking, come out. Come. Yes, God would locate you. What makes you think God will forget about you? Run and come. Come and take your breakthrough. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come and join them before you do your work. See, let me tell you something. While she stood here, she was praying and saying that the Lord will locate her. Is that, is that what you are saying? Because I saw like a flash of light and I saw it written. And this was what she was thinking. And the Lord said, let her join and pray first. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, visit her family. Visit her family. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hold your hands together. Two friends. You who came and we are just talking, looking through the window and doing a lot of things. God is going to visit you. Where is your mother? Go and tell her huh, that by next month a big miracle is coming for her. Hmm? You know, when God tells me words like this, I'm very careful before you go and write an article on me. Now people can write all kinds of articles. Prediction incorrect. Three exclamation. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hold my hands. Let me pray for two. Hold. God is going to visit you. Look at me. You will be great ladies. I want to pray for you. The hand of God will come mightily upon you. Thank you, Father. Use them for your glory right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let their families be mighty. Let their lives be mighty. I separate you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lay your hands on him. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Let him experience your power and your grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You are sick in your body. You came here specifically for a miracle, for sickness. Let me see your hands. Please let me see your hands quickly so that we'll know. Okay. Please come out and line up quickly. Let's minister to the sick now. Baba, come. I will start with you. Please celebrate our daddy. Thank you for coming. If you're outside, please come quickly. Just line up quickly. No. Welfare. Please, please, don't come out wondering, will God heal me? Will God touch me? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. Pastor Williams, Pastor Jakes, can we quickly minister to them? Please, as hands come, worship him. Just lead us. Powerful songs of worship. Hallelujah. As we pray for them. Those of you who are seated, just keep praying in tongues. We'll pray for them quickly and then we'll minister. I want God to touch everybody this night. Hallelujah. I want God to touch everybody. I pray that God will give us time. Hallelujah. If there is time, by the grace of God, we'll lay hands on everybody. Everybody. Hallelujah. We're just praying that we'll be able to do this quickly. Hallelujah. Worship team. Savior, 
He can move the mountains. Thank you, Father. Let your power move as we pray for your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. As we pray for you, please go back to your seat. Pastor Jesus. Okay. As we pray for you, just, you don't need to tell us what is wrong with you. As we pray for you, just trust the power of God to touch you. Jesus conquered the way. my blood sister this thing has made me angry this is my blood sister blood of my blood bone of my bones that devil is a bastard this night this is my own blood sister same father same mother right now in the mighty name of Jesus let my sister this is my mother's baby bone of her bone flesh of her flesh In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of sickness. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out of her. Forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No sickness type for go. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If I do not fall sick, my sister will not fall sick. In the name of Jesus Christ. Perfection. Everything wrong with you be healed now. Hallelujah. Sorry, I took it personal. The thing pained me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. Hallelujah. Please, if you are holding a picture, just lift it up and we'll pray on it. Lift it up and we'll pray on it. Praise God. If you are holding someone's picture, just lift it up. We'll have the time when we we'll pray on pictures. Hallelujah. It's raining. As you go back, make sure you check yourself. Miracles are happening. It's raining. What's wrong with you? It's raining. It's raining. <laughs> I feel the wind of the spirit. Now the heart beat of heaven. Let us hear. Let it roll. Let it roll. Open the Lord. Let it roll. Open the Lord. Open the Lord. 
that in the name of Jesus be healed and delivered.
specifically you can come and stand it doesn't mean you have it we want to cancel HIV now there's nothing to feel hallelujah whether for yourself or for your loved one doesn't mean you have HIV <laughs> hallelujah praise the Lord please don't be impulsive HIV is a killer disease you may have it come out to come out and to die. That devil is a liar. Bring her up here. Bring her up. Just leave her, leave her, leave her, leave her, just leave her. Leave her, leave her, just leave her. HIV, how many of you know HIV is a killer disease? How many of you know that HIV is from the pit of hell? Hallelujah. And how many of you know that HIV is reversible? This is what we are going to do right now. Worship team, powerfully, that song, miracles everywhere. Hallelujah. As we pray for HIV, please believe it. Believe it for yourself and for any other person that you are standing for. As you are praying right now, some of you, when we pray for you, you need to call them and tell them this is it.
give Jesus a shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you bring your prayer request? Do you have your prayer request? Please bring them out and pass it. Hallelujah. Ushers coordinate them quickly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to know mighty miracles are happening in this place. Mighty, mighty miracles. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Mighty miracles are happening. Now, this is what will happen. Pastor Jakes will come up, just, just um, minister for a few minutes. While he's doing that, I'll just take a few minutes break. When I come up, we're going to pray on the request. But we are going to take a few testimonies right now. Hallelujah. Now, please check yourself inside and outside. If you see that there is a notable healing, notable miracle, especially for those of you who were delivered. Hallelujah. Notable something left you, a chain broke. God, open your eyes to see something. How do we do it now? Uh, just go to the back. Go to the back. Hallelujah. When Pastor Jakes is done, he will meet you there. Hallelujah. Meanwhile, pass your prayer request quickly. Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen to me. While Apostle was ministering to those, the women with the, the burying cases. Now listen to me. One of you, three of you, this is what I saw, kind of babies you were carrying. Hallelujah. I saw the clothes the babies were wrapped in. They call it, is it turquoise blue? Is it turquoise blue? One was white, then the other was pink. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We did not discuss this before I came. Early on, while speaking to you, and I told you a woman will come giving a testimony of a baby. Are you following? Please. Pay attention to what the Lord is doing tonight. Hallelujah. First, because God will confirm his word and God will confirm the prophetic declarations of his servants. Hallelujah. I'll pray for some people right now. Please lift up your hands. The Lord communicated to me. The intention of Satan is to take away somebody's life during NYSE. Are you following? Just three days into NYSE. Hallelujah. And I began to weep. And I'll pray right now and the Lord will roll that thing away. Are you following what I'm saying? Please listen to me. I do not know who you are, but the Lord will locate you. Are you following? Whether it's your family member or whatever, that the hand of God will locate you. The devil is a bastard. Are you following what I'm saying? Satan is a bastard. How can somebody, God, the parents will bring you to a point where you are supposed to bring blessing and suddenly the plan of Satan is to take away that life because people have projected from the village. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Father, we thank you. Please lift up your hands. Thank you, blessed Lord. <laughs> thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, blessed Lord. Man Rikoto Panibong Rafi Ketale Brasso Pratelia Leon Jimbembrong Rate Kapota Virata Labara Baba Baba. The fire of God will locate you. The fire of God will locate you. The fire of God will locate you. That intention from the pit of hell, the fire of God will locate you. The fire of God will locate you right now. In the name of Jesus, let the angels of God, <laughs> aha, let the angels of God locate you. Ushers, please take note. Mark Repong, Shiketabiro, Vendel, Yarababandaya, Riano Robobobela Galabosana, Riatapon, Rate Ketelia, Bakitong, Shiketabira Tose, Bila Kada, 
I rebuke that hand of death. We roll away that spirit of death. That projection from the kingdom of darkness. That projection from the kingdom of darkness. Please still lift up your hands. The Lord will break chains. The Bible says, whatever he does, prospereth. The, works, the Lord is to bless the works of our hands. Chains tying people's hands down. The sword of the spirit will break through. And the Lord will release financial blessings. Please listen to me. Because some of you from now, please pay attention to what I'm saying. Checks will be written. Are you following? Financial blessings will come. I'm telling you, I know what I'm saying. Financial blessings will come to you. There are people that your family have been suffering. They've been trying. Your father has been working. But his, their hands are chained. Their hands are chained. And the fire of God will go through. Some of you will literally feel the fire of God in your hands. There are chains around your hands that will be broken right now. Thank you, blessed Lord. Please just lift up your hands. Let the sword of God's spirit go. Let chains be broken right now. Let chains be broken. Even outside. Let chains be broken right now in the name of Jesus. Let the chains be broken right this moment. Let chains be broken in the name of Jesus. Chains be broken. Chains be broken. Chains, chains. Chains holding your businesses down. Your father's prosperity, your family's prosperity, the works of your hands. Let the blessings of God come upon it right now. In the name of Jesus. Barrio, rapidegon, rapidegon, zepregila. Lingzon Rati Gata Chakraton Rebalooske Mali Rokoto Baralana Bakate Gosu Paragale Bosha Thank you, blessed Lord. Thank you, blessed Lord. Thank you, blessed Jesus. Please, those of you with chest conditions, the Lord wants to touch you now. Are you following? Those of you with chest conditions, thank you, Lord. Please just lay your hands on your chest. Chest conditions around your heart, your lungs. Please just lay your hands. I sense the Lord touching you there right now. Just lay your hands on your chest. Blessed Lord. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Some of you will feel a warmth. A warmth around your chest region. The Lord will be touching you right now. Thank you, blessed Lord. Thank you, blessed Lord. Let healing come to you right now. You will feel a release. You sense a release right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that chest condition. Let it go. Let it go in the name of Jesus. Let it go right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That devil holding your chest, I command a release right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Lord. Thank you, blessed Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Just before I hand the mic over, the Lord communicates to me about these people. The Lord wants to grant you wings of ego. I hear what I'm saying? Wings of ego. It's for some people, it's not everybody I'm talking to. Wings of, of, of egos. The Bible is the amount of with wings as ego to come as grace in the spirit wings of ego you are so high you are so high in the spirit <laughs> please lift up your hand I'm telling you the Lord will 
that you wings of eagle. Thank you, blessed Lord. Holy Spirit, let the breath of God rest upon them in the name of Jesus. Let the breath of God rest upon them. Let the breath of God rest upon them in the name of Jesus. Let the breath of God right now as I speak in the name of Jesus for those people, blessed one, ha! Blessed one for those people, my God. Let the hand of God come upon you. Rando Koshi Pratila. Let the hand of God come upon you. The hand of God comes upon you. The hand of God comes upon you. The hand of God comes upon you. Ushers, help me find those people. The hand of God comes upon you. Just bring them to the right here. The hand of God comes upon you. The hand of God, of God comes upon you. The hand of God comes upon you. The hand of God comes upon you. Wings to mount up. Wings to mount up. Wings to mount up. Just bring them to the right here. Bring them to the right. Wings to mount up. Wings as eagles to mount up. Wings. Wings. Wings in the spirit. Wings in the spirit. There's a guy and a lady outside the Lord will touch you now. There's a guy and a lady outside the Lord will touch you right now. Rate poto parikabo liberosi ilaraba hastu pirati landa pakiato shikse sufra nende man shakila baunjale. My dear, you will not recover. Are you hearing? You will not recover because you begin to have experiences, dangerous experiences. Help me find that guy and that lady outside I spoke about. Liro Supretila, Sando Roshike Cobra Lila Kata, Vira Ranando Sing Radiata. at my cute baby this lady was participating powerfully hallelujah praise god now we're going to pray i hope we have all the requests who has not written please one minute quickly just write quickly and come and drop it god answers prayers in this place mighty prayers there's still a lot to do god is blessing people there are impartations going on don't wait until you come out Hallelujah. All right, everybody stand. This is a very prophetic moment. Please stand. Online, I hope we're connecting. Prayer, all the prayer requests that have been submitted online. left we want to pray on the request right now hallelujah 
Every request in this place is turned to testimonies. Hallelujah. Please, those, even as we pray, there will be impartations. So those who are here, as much as possible, um, just relax so that you don't get up and then you collapse on the way. Hallelujah. Do we have any more prayer requests? Okay, let's give one more minute quickly. I see people rushing with their requests. Please, for all our miracle services, we pray on request. This was an instruction that God gave us. We cannot meet every need. Those who are online, connect with us. Mighty testimonies have come up. Hallelujah. We've had barren women have triplets. We've had genotypes changed. We've had all kinds of unbelievable testimonies. Let's see how this episode will be right now. Praise God. Pastor, Pastor Williams. Please celebrate him as he comes. Pastor, James, we are going to pray. Pastor Williams is going to lead us through this prophetic session. All I need you to do is stretch your hands and say amen when it's time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Satalabrati Shatilibrati Shatala. Yesu Milaga Kada Shilibra Kada de Shitalabala Shitala. Raguni Zibra Dini Koko Shita Talabraki Tashi Talaba. Eyamano Shibra Lilabadushi Kalabalo Shita Mira Kata Shatalaba. Raka Bata 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 let the miracles let be breakthrough let the impossible become possible miracle jobs in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Ghost let doors open let doors open by the blood of Jesus let doors open by the blood of Jesus let doors open by the blood of Jesus let there be possible let it possible become possible by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of our Lord Jesus. In the name of our Lord Jesus, let the man and woman conceive and rejoice in the name of our Lord Jesus. Let there be creativity in the name of our Lord Jesus. Oh, my by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the finger of the Most High, by your power, oh God, by the greatness of that power, let the enemies submit by the blood of Jesus, let us submit by the blood of Jesus, let us submit by the blood of Jesus, let doors open for your people, let us open, even those who are online, let us open in the name of Jesus, let there be miracles, miracles, Testimonies, miracles, testimonies, miracles, let it happen now, miracles, let there be testimonies, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let that which is impossible with men become possible now, 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost, thank you very God, bless be the name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Father. Every request here we declare in the name of Jesus, it is turned into testimonies now. It is turned into testimonies now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I see miracles everywhere right now before we enter the prophetic session. Miracles everywhere.
Hallelujah. The Lord is going to do mighty things right now in this place. It's another dimension of the mighty things that you'll be doing. Hallelujah. Please, brothers and sisters, listen. God will not bring you to this place to waste your time. I told you all you need to do is to believe. All you need to do is to believe. Hallelujah. We are going to begin to decree and the power of God will move in another dimension in this place. Please, I'd like you to believe. I want you to shout amen. I want you to believe. It's time for breakthrough. It's time for the limitations that tie people maritally, job-wise. It's time for it to bow. It's time for yokes to be destroyed. And we'll also pray that there will be impartation. Some of you came to take fresh grace. Some of you have exhausted certain spiritual levels. Some doors have just refused to open. You have fasted, you have prayed. We have come tonight by the grace of God to supply grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you something. Prophetic words are very, very powerful. Hallelujah. It's not about speaking. It's about creating. Hallelujah. The prophetic word of God does not just reveal your problem. You already know what the problem is. But creating solution. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Oh, that you will believe, brothers and sisters. That you will believe. That you will believe. Last miracle service, a lady had two pressing requests. One of it was to get a life partner. For her, it was becoming a serious issue. The second was to get a job. I sent the leaders the text. The very next day, after Friday like this, the next day, Somebody that has been playing around, has not been serious today, he's here, tomorrow is there, the very next day. This brother just came and said, look, I'm ready to be serious. We're going to get married. And that, listen, listen, don't clap yet. The, that same Saturday, she got a text that on the next Wednesday, she should come for an interview. That one is not just a miracle. That's what we call breakthrough. Hallelujah. Pastor Jakes began to speak about finances. We are going to pray for that and for other issues. Are you ready to receive for your loved ones? Lift up your hands. It does wonders in our midst. I started seeing this since Tuesday. I saw a big padlock, bigger than this building, and it was closed. And I don't assume explanations when the Lord has not told me what it is. Hallelujah. Even till I came here, God did not tell me anything about it. And when I sat down, while, past, I, mean, while I was standing there, Pastor Jakes was ministering, and the Holy Spirit told me, to open the doors of prison to them that are bound. To open the doors of prison to them that are bound. Thank you, Jesus. Now in the name of Jesus, every tied down marital destiny, every lady that is due for marriage, every brother that is due for marriage, and nothing is happening, this night, I command that door be open. 
be open now. Doors of marriage be open now. I call forth your life partner into your life in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it in Jesus' name. Receive it now. Every marital chain over your life, I open it and I break that chain now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For all those trusting God for job, you have applied and applied, you have done everything you know to do. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decree and I declare, doors of jobs scattered around this nation and beyond, I compel you in the name that is above all names, open now, open now, open now. Federal government jobs, oil company jobs, bank jobs, in the name of Jesus. I release it to your life. I release it to your life. Where you do not have helpers, may my God step in for you. May God step in for you. May God step in for you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every family here that has begun a building project and has not been able to complete it for whatever reason, right now, I compel that project to be completed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every power that holds that project, I challenge you in the name that is above all names. Let God's people finish what they have started in the name of Jesus. Every academic issue in this place. Whether admission issue, whether graduation issue, whether whatever issue, service issue, in the name that is above all names, I pray right now for every academic darkness. Let there be light now. 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 For those that the devil has tied down and has said you will not finish, whether it's your undergraduate, whether your master's, whether your PhD, whatever. I command the doors of, of graduation to be open for you now. Whatever course needs to be waived, we waive it now. We waive it now. We waive it now. Whoever has found that you will not graduate this night, we compel them to let you go. And for those who have been trusting God for service, you are finished. The name will come out, your name will not be there. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray right now. May God move in a way no man can explain. And may you be mobilized in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for every family that has, has tried to move forward. There are families that are tied down, not as individuals, as a family. It will keep working for others. But when it gets to your turn, it stops. Tonight, in the name that is above all names, whatever has not been working in your family, we move it now in the name of Jesus. 
whatever mountain we challenge it. Rekata, sosote, afarekata, masote, bariata. I challenge it. I challenge it. I challenge that mountain in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every spirit that is responsible for fight and quarrels in the house. Some of you, your parents are under yokes you cannot understand. It's not their fault, but tonight, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every power upon your family members that will not bring peace at home, I curse it to its root in the name of Jesus. I curse it to its root in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mighty things are happening in this place. Hallelujah. I want to pray and break the curse of poverty. There are some families, it doesn't matter how much they give you. Something will eat it up. You buy a car to have accident. You build a house, rain will wash it. Right now I pray that any covenant of poverty that was entered in Rakata Bosota Repo Shotala on behalf of your family I set it on fire now I set it on fire now 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 Hallelujah Listen I'm still going to pray that the power of God is going to move upon some people in a mighty way because this poverty in families must be broken people have gotten into prostitution because of it there are people who think you are lazy they do not know that there are forces behind are you hearing what I'm saying lift your hands I will first pray for you 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 before your family forget about your family for one minute and pray for yourself if you don't need it, just put down your hands. But if you are tired at where you are and you are saying, Lord, I'm not too young to be blessed, lift your hands. When I count three, shout the name of Jesus, the power of God. Man, if you fall like fire, that cause, my God, I pray that that yoke of poverty will be lifted. Are you ready now? One, two, three. We cause it, we cause it, we cause it, we cause it. We cause it. Poverty dies. Now, now, now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray a very dangerous prayer for you right now. Remember the teaching I did on activating breakthroughs. The ministry of destiny help us. Hear me. There are many of you where you are now. You have the gift. You have the skill. You just need those who need what you have. You have it. You just need somebody. Hear me. The Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Hallelujah. Many of you after this meeting, I tell you on that God, they will send for you. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Whoever across this globe called earth has been destined to locate you and honor the grace upon your life wherever they are except god is not god in this place i pray tonight by the power of the holy ghost i call them into your life receive their ministry receive their ministry receive their ministry Let 
destiny help us wherever you are in the name of the Lord Jesus wherever you are from this night through phone calls emails supernatural coincidences connect to them connect to them connect to them hallelujah hallelujah I want to pray against the plague of death 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 lift your hands for you and your loved ones hear me the Bible says with long life it didn't say will I give you it said will I satisfy you you are supposed to be satisfied with it hallelujah and no devil should cut short your life I want to pray for you now every plague of death over any life here or over any family by the power of the blood be lifted now in the name of Jesus 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 Hallelujah. Listen. Do you know why the psalmist prayed a very powerful prayer? He said, you are my glory and the lifter up of my head. That means something lifted it down. So that those that will see it and bless it cannot see it. I pray for you. Whatever has put your head down so that nobody will bless you this night. According to the prayer of the psalmist, lay your hands on your head. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray whatever has put you down, I prophesy, arise, 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 shake it, shake it, my protocotosa, arise. Hallelujah. Keep your hands up, please. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says, It shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water, which yield its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. He said, Whatsoever he does, prospers. Lift those hands. Every curse that the devil wants to put upon your hands, there are some of you, anything that touches your hand fails no matter what it is from tonight that year comes to an end in the name of jesus that year comes to an end in the name of jesus that year comes to an end in the name of jesus hallelujah now i want to pray against habits look at me there are people dying of all kinds of habits from all kinds of lust to all kinds of things are you getting what i'm saying this is what gives satan access into the lives of many people doesn't matter how they pray for you doesn't matter how they they deliver you you will find yourself paul said that the things that i want to do I do not find myself doing them he said and the things that i don't want to do that's what i find myself doing it he said with my spirit i serve the lord but in my body i see another law working in my members and he said oh wretched man that i am who shall deliver me from this body of death i want to pray for you take this prayer very seriously because many of us, after all the prayers and the deliverances, we keep opening doors. I want to pray for you. It takes grace. It's not about struggle. Listen. Say, look at me. If you want to use willpower to say, I want to force myself not to sleep with this sister, you are joking. Except you are not a man that God created. Many people have tried to use force this is where grace comes in 
You see, grace is a powerful ability of the spirit. It makes you extraordinary. That's why some people don't believe that there are people who can walk in holiness. They say it's impossible. Did you know that wicked spirits are behind these promptings? You see a matured man who go and carry a little girl like this one, this baby. Huh? A baby that he can give birth to how many times? And then still want to molest. Them. It's not normal, brothers and sisters. Or pornography. Once you see free internet, your body is shaking. No, it's not normal. Either the victory of Jesus Christ is a lie or there is something wrong. We want to settle that issue tonight. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, every fleshly desire that although you love God, you are seeing another law, whatever power that sponsors this operation of lust and immorality, I curse you to your root in the name of Jesus. I curse you to your root in the name of Jesus. I curse you to your root in the name of Jesus. I release you from every kind of habit you have been praying about. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and men. There are many of us, there is nothing like favor in your life. When you hear people talk about favor, you just keep clapping for them. But the sincere truth is that you don't have that testimony. Somebody can come and meet you come somebody can meet you and say take me to sister a's house you will escort them they will go and bring sister a and leave you it's not so favor is the sign that the presence of god is with you and if you truly have the presence of god something a signature somebody should just like you and bless you lift your hands let me pray for you if you have not been shouting amen this is a place to shout an amen and receive i pray let the oil of favor may it mantle your life now in the name of jesus 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 in the name of Jesus, favor, 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 favor. I'm going to pray that prayer one more time. Many of you do not know that one day of favor can end some wicked struggles in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Favor. Somebody called a man of God and told him, he says, sir, for the rest of your life, I want to be giving you allowance for food forever. What kind of, what kind of thing is that? And this is somebody that is blessed. Hallelujah. A lady walked up to me some months ago and said, every month I will be bringing cake for you. Every month she brings cake for me. Every month. There are people that send me recharge card every month as, as a covenant between them and God. There are people that say every month I'm sowing it no matter what it is. See, God can bring somebody who will like you. No strings attached. They are just compelled by God to bless you. May those kind of people find you after this night. May those kind of people find you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, let me share with you a true story. And it's the story of somebody I know. This guy was trusting God for a breakthrough in his life. Things had gone so bad. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? And he just went to Abuja. When he went to Abuja, he just met his friends. Hear me. The friends told him, just follow me. And he followed them sheepishly, only to go and find out that they were, they were trying to negotiate a land. How much was the land? 720 million naira. And the agents will get 10%, 72 million. And they, with him, they became four. He thought he was dreaming. When they gave them, they said, you, you followed us. You have something. This guy became a millionaire overnight. See, I don't believe in laziness, but there is so much your hard work can do. Lift your hands one more time. I pray for you. Where you are struggled, where you are running, may the favor of God pick you. In the name of Jesus. May the favor of God pick you. Hallelujah. 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 Shabbat I want to pray one more prayer. Hallelujah. The Lord was ministering to me about something, so I was just waiting to be sure. Now I'm going to pray for you. This is the last prayer point. Hallelujah. Hear me. Many of you do not know that the biggest secret of being successful in life is to carry the fire of the Lord upon your life. Hallelujah. The sincere truth is there are many of us who love breakthrough. We love miracles. But this passion for God is not there. We can run to God and come and make promises. Oh God, I will do X, Y, Z. But except your heart is with God, blessings will kill you are you getting what i'm saying there are many of us the day you see one million in your account with your eyes that day you will tell god wait till the day the devil whips you and whips everything away you will remember god again i want to pray for me i consider this to be the biggest part of this meeting and it's an impartation i want to release grace and fresh fire Please stand up, everybody. Let's honor this prayer request. This is why some of you came, especially some of you who are pastors or in ministry. You cannot afford to do ministry in a powerless way. You will struggle for nothing. It's what will make you angry with people. And it's what will lead you to go and start dipping your hands into ungodly things because you are looking for power. There are pastors now running helter skelter, going everywhere because they want power for signs and wonders. And God can give it freely. Our goal in this place, hear me, I've said it again and again, is not for us to have some superstar men of God trying to help some people. No, is to empower you and release you to go and do the works. Hallelujah. There are some of you that have been praying and say, Lord, will you put an anointing upon my life that will cause my generation to hear my voice? There are many of you who have been praying and saying, Lord, my prayer life is dead. There is even nothing there again. There are some of you, your word life is dead. The last time you read your Bible was during Koinonia last week. I'm going to pray for you. There will be an impartation. And I'm going to release spiritual gifts. Paul said, I desire to come to you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift. This thing is not about struggling. If it's there, it's there. If it's not there, it's not there. Period. I'm wearing a suit. I cannot assume I'm wearing a suit. I'm not wearing a kaftan. No matter how I pull this suit down, it's not a kaftan. Brothers and sisters, I see the way many people behave over anointing. This is not how God trained us. When you catch it, you know you have it. Paul said, such as I have. This struggle that people do, it is not there. Period. I 
I don't want you to have a struggling Christian life that will make you to start lying bringing prophecies that are not of God misleading people into things that God did not say because you are under pressure to show that you have power you lay hands on people they are not healed you force them to say they are healed brother if that healing power is there it will show you don't need to tell people I have it people are not blind they are not stupid they know when authentic power is there there are ministers that are struggling struggling arrogantly and they will not know there is an easy path in the spirit today I want to pray for you if you will believe that something will come upon your life it's not enough to see the things that happen here these things are available if you are really interested lift your hands I want to pray for you from the depth of my heart you are a pastor you are an evangelist you are an apostle you are a prophet you are a ministry or you just have a passion for God and your Christian life has died fire is coming upon you lift your hands just keep your hands lifted Jesus, let a fire of impartation. Your people need fire. They need power in their life. Right now at the count of three, there will be a release of mighty impartations. After the count of three, I'd like you to shout at this in goodness. The power of God will move in a mighty way. I will release it from the depths of my heart. One, two, three. Take it now. Take it now. Receive it. Fire altars coming alive. Shake at a Prayer altars coming alive by the power of the Holy Ghost. Fresh power. Fresh fire. Let it come like a mantle upon your life, inside and outside. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Shake it, take 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 it, Whichever it is that is for you, it will hit you where you are right now. Let the gift of wisdom, my God, upon as many. Just a symbol. Take it now. Take it now. The gift of wisdom. The word of knowledge. Receive it like fire. Take it. Take it. The gift of healing in the name of Jesus. Let the healing anointing fall. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Healing fire. Healing fire. So toto kaba. Rekete nekata. Ba proto shota balarada. Let the gift of prophecy. I command prophetic fountains at the count of three be open one two three take 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 it right now prophetic fire prophetic fire shake it take the rebosha for those so high shake it take grace for visions grace for prophecy dimensions 
of spiritual experiences. Gift of tongues. Receive it. Interpretation of tongues. The working of miracles. The working of miracles. The mantle to move powerfully in the miraculous. You will raise wheelchairs. Blind eyes will be open. Deaf ears will be open. Take it now. Take it now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. For those of you in business or all kinds of entrepreneurial things, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that anointing that was upon Joseph that made him do supernatural things, I pray right now, may that anointing upon as many who are in business, then entrepreneurship, and our kingdom financiers right now let it fall upon you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus every request that you came here with whatever made you to leave your house and come here tonight whether it has been mentioned or not i lift up my hands and in the name that is above all names we turn that request into a testimony we turn that request into a testimony It will never be the same again. I want to give you an opportunity right now to make it right with Jesus. Keep standing inside and outside. Please everybody listen to me. No distraction. I want to give you an opportunity right now. Of all of the mighty things that God has done in this place, the greatest of all miracles, please keep standing, is the salvation of your soul. And I know there are people here who have never made it right with God. You've always wanted to. But you've not seen any reason. Some of you outside belong to this category. And right now, I'm going to make an altar call. Some of you have given your heart to the Lord. But sincerely, you have derailed from the things of God. It's time to make it right tonight. All of these miracles are a demonstration of the love of God and I do not want you to miss this opportunity I'm going to count one to five wherever you are the Holy Ghost is already speaking to you the Bible says as many as will come to him he will in no wise cast away it's time for you to begin a journey that will make your life count in this life and secure your, your eternity with Christ Therefore, wherever you are, it's my pleasure to invite you right now. Inside and outside, don't wait for anybody to come. You are the first to come. As I begin to count, please leave your seat. One, God bless you. Hurry up, rush. Come out as though it's a matter of life and death because it is. Two, please hurry up. Don't let anybody stop you. Let them see you. It's better for them to see you and you make heaven three. Koinonia celebrate them. They are coming. Encourage them. As many from outside. Don't let anybody stop you. Four. Just one more count and we are done. Jesus is inviting you. An end to your struggles. You have tried. You have done your best. You have done all you know to do. It says, come on to me. All ye that are heavy laden and weary, and I will give you rest. He's called the Prince of Peace. When he comes into your life, he truly brings peace. We are waiting for you quickly. Quickly, anybody. Appreciate them. They are still coming. God bless you. God bless you. This is why God brought you here. Hallelujah. Now, those of you in front, I congratulate you for coming to make this glorious decision. 
God bless you. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, all of you in front. I want to pray for you. Mean it from the depths of your heart. Reciting it as a poem does not make you born again. But from the depths of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me. I confess my sins. I ask you to help me tonight. Forgive my sins. Cleanse me with your precious blood. From today, I receive eternal life into my spirit. I'm a child of God. Forward ever. Backward never. Holy Spirit, come and live in me. Function through me. Make me an ambassador of the kingdom. I denounce sin and Satan. Whatever is not of God cannot thrive in my life again. I am a true Christian. I am a child of God. I receive grace to live the victorious Christian life in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep your hands lifted. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. You brought these ones by your power. I thank you for what you are doing in their lives. I pray that their experience will last in the name of Jesus. Receive these ones and make them mighty men. Secure their eternal destiny in Christ. And I give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. Now quickly, I want you to follow the ushers. They will have your details and will follow you up tomorrow by 5 o'clock. Please listen. Tomorrow by 5 o'clock, we would like to see you at chapel, just close to the book stand, chapel, ABU. Please try to come around. Hallelujah. Those who invited them, encourage them so that they can come. We pray with you, get you filled with the Holy Spirit, and we follow you up. May God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.